was the, uh, how old were you when this incident took place? Probably about 14. Okay, and do you remember the date of the incident at all? No, not really. I know it was uh, during uh, school time because I was uh, going to school at that time. I was in school. I'd be up the next day for school. Okay, and uh, what city and state did this take place? Uh, it happened in Palm Valley, Florida, which is uh, Ponte Vedra Beach, Florida, mm -hmm. mailing address. But I actually live in Palm Valley. Okay, and the approximate time of day or night of the incident? Uh, it happened between 9 and 9.30, to my recollection. In the evening? In the evening. Okay, and the weather conditions that night? The skies were clear. Uh, it was cool. It was in the fall. I remember that. Um, and um, no rain, no clouds, no... You could see the stars? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, because back then, there was nobody around us for miles. Right. We were the only families, you know, back there. There was maybe three or four families on a two-and-a-half-mile-long dirt road, and we were at the very end of it. Okay, so uh, the actual incident itself, can you explain exactly where you sleeping, where you awake? Give me the story exactly how you remember it. And when you first noticed the incident happening? Okay. Well, I used to sneak cigarettes from my grandmother after they'd go to bed because they went to bed early at night. I was living with them and going to school in Jacksonville Beach and because uh, I didn't like the schools in Jacksonville. My parents were in the process of moving out to the same area. We owned 75 acres of land out there. And most everything is farmland. We had horses and cows on it. And my grandparents had a fenced-in area of about two and a half acres. That was a yard. And you would have to carry the trash out at night and put it in the back of a truck with a camper on it because of the raccoons and stuff would come out and get into it, trash it all up. We also had some small Florida black bear that, you know, came around. And uh, you got to remember, we were out in the middle of nothing but woods surrounding us on three sides, complete deep woods, uh, approximately 13,000 acres of woods that belonged to St. Regis Paper Company. So uh, it was pretty desolate out there. And my grandparents had gone to bed. I had to take the trash out, and I snuck one of her cigarettes. I walked, I lit the cigarette, and I grabbed the garbage, and I went down the stairs, walked outside, and walked to the truck, stuck the trash in, closed it down and locked it, turned around, and was just kind of leaning there on the truck, smoking my cigarette, just looking around and looking at the stars and trying to find the constellations that my grandpa had showed me. And out of nowhere came this... Uh, really super bright, fast-moving object that was lit up, just zipping, zapping back and forth. But it just, because I've been looking up and looking around, I never saw it. And it's all open for, you know, two, three, four, five, six miles, you know. I mean, you can see the, the sky, the whole sky. You know, everything. And there was no other homes that were close enough that lit up, you know, that would make the tear away from the darkness right. that was out there. Uh, there wasn't much of a moon out that night. So, uh, and I remember that the harvest moon was due to show up at some point within the next month or two. So it was in the fall. And, um, I blocked a lot of this out because I never really talked about it, like I told you before. Mm -hmm. And you're actually the first person outside of the immediate pipe, immediate family, that even knows what happened that night. And um, and we didn't. My grandmother and I didn't even speak about it for oh, probably weeks before she and I even said anything to each other about what had happened.
did you actually see a spacecraft? I saw something that was not of this world. This was back in the 70s. You know, this was uh, 73, 74-ish. I mean, I don't believe we had the capability to do anything like that. This object, now, I was fixated on this object, watching it. And then it just came to a stop. And it was like, it really wasn't a saucer. It was more oblong-y looking. And, but all these lights on it. Did they have windows? Not that I could see anything. It looked like a metal, like, there was no windows hmm. that I could see. It was mostly the, the bright lights and this ovally shaped thing that I could see. And um, it hovered over above me several hundred feet, maybe four or five hundred or more. I'm not real good with distance like that, but, you know, it was it was a good, you know, 500 feet hovering over me. Any idea how long it was or how wide it was in dimension? Could you make out any kind of dimensions? When I first, my first thought was it looked like a blimp, one that you see at, like, uh, football games. Right. Or um, uh, races, NASCAR races, where they have the big blimps, right. and the guys are up there shooting from it. You know, it seemed like it was maybe on that size, or maybe a little larger, right. maybe a little wider. You know, but for the most part, it was in a. That's what it reminded me of. That was my first thought in my head, thinking back. That it looked like a plant. But it had lights on it. Lights. And it wasn't a balloon. Right. It was it was metal. You could clearly see that it was of some type of metal material. Okay? I don't know what, you know, it was shiny. But I don't, I really don't remember. I couldn't tell you. The closest thing I could come to in giving you a description of what it looked like would, to me would be like stainless steel. Mm -hmm. Or sterling silver. Something shiny. But then the lights could have done it. Their lights were reflecting off of it. So it, it obscured, you know, a lot of what you... Maybe there were windows and I couldn't see them because of the lights. You know, I don't know. It never got that close to, to me to see it. I guess as my grandmother, when I was standing over this, underneath this, because I walked away from the truck and I moved towards closer to where I could see the object and also closer to the distance to where the door was and the porch because I'm still not completely in this trance-like state that my grandmother said that I went into. She wasn't there with you? Who was not at that time. Not at that time. She was awoken and when she was awoken she um, uh, got up Immediately, she said, and didn't even stop to put on her house coat or her slippers or anything. And she came down the hall of the bed from the bedrooms, and she came straight outside like she knew where I was. She felt like something was guiding her, like an angel or something was guiding her to come get me, to rescue me, to save me, to whatever. She said she felt this, you know, heaviness on her. And she immediately went out the front, you know, out the door, the same door I went out. And she saw me, and everything was bright around me. And I'm looking up at this thing. And she came from the stairway, ran out there, grabbed me by my arm, and drug me and pulled me behind their vehicle. They had a Toyota van at the time. So it was one of those old ones that sat up real high. And she drug us behind this van, and it was really dark in this area. And she was, I remember her shaking and trembling as she was holding me tight. She had left marks on my arm from squeezing my arm so tight. 
And, and I kept asking her, what are you doing? What are you doing? And she said, all I remember her saying was a very, you know, short comment that they were going to take you. And that's what she said to me. Now, was this beam of light still searching for you? Was it, still it flew around right. in the yard area. It shone these lights down all amongst, but where we were at was tucked up underneath the, the awning in the garage area uh, where the vehicles were parked. And so they weren't able to get their lights in there. The, they could see the vehicles, but they couldn't detect us because we were literally basically almost under the van by this time. And as soon as the lights were out of the yard to where they weren't in the immediate area of where we were, we made a beeline for the door, which was only maybe six or seven feet away from where the vehicle was parked at in front of it made a beeline for the door, ran inside. Um, she clicked off the porch light. She ran through the house, started shutting all the lights down in the house. There weren't that many because it was just me up watching TV. My bed curfew time was 10 o'clock. So, um, but she said that I, um, she literally had to drag me, you know, because I wasn't, myself you know I wasn't in that fear mode I was you know being swift away by by her but literally dragging me to get where we needed to get to safety me not dragging her you know at, at her age so uh, she said that they must have had me in some type of a trance with those lights or something she said because I was focused dead focused on it looking straight up, and the cigarette that I had in my hand had burned down the filter. It had burned down to the filter. There were, you know, it just, there was a, a lot of ashes, maybe a couple of inches long. So it had burned completely out. I maybe got three or four puffs off of it. So that's the only time frame I can go by from when right. I was smoking the cigarette, right. you know, and when... Um, this encounter happened, and when she grabbed me, and the cigarette was completely burned out, and it was cool, right. you know, it was, there was no heat to it, so, you know, the ashes were cold. So, in your estimation, from the first time that you saw this object, or noticed this here object, so she got you inside, how much time do you think was there? How much time do you think passed? Well, see, there's some time that I don't remember what happened. And then there's when she grabbed me. From that time, I remember it was about 10 minutes total before we got in the house. Mm -hmm. About 10 minutes it took for them to do their little swoop and then leave that we got in the house. So... And if you got in and shut the lights out, this vehicle or whatever just disappeared? It flew around out there in the pastures. It just kind of, you know, combed like did a sweep for maybe a minute and a half, two minutes, something like a that. A slow sweep? No, it kind of zipped and it zapped. And it zipped and it zapped. And then about the third time it did it, it was gone you know, shining these lights all over, these huge, like, floodlights, I remember. So there was more than one beam? Yeah, coming how from it. How, how many beams of light do you, would you guess like that there was? Three to four, maybe. Okay. Three to four lights, uh, huge lights coming from it, but it was encrusted, like, encircled in lights. Right. And that's what caught me. That's what got my attention was these, this bright, shiny object with these beautiful lights. They look like crystals almost, you know. 
So as far as witnesses, it was just you and your grandmother. Yes. Has seen this. Yes. Uh, has now, she didn't take the time to look at what it was. She just saw me standing there with all these lights on me. Right. And it was hovering up way above where she could see from where she was at under the carport. Mm -hmm. Until she ran out there, she said she looked up. She knew. That's why she said they. Right. We're going to take you. Because she read a lot of stuff about UFOs. Right. And, and all. She, she believed in them. And, uh, you know, she told me a story of her grandmother when they lived in Sicily, that there was uh, three or four of them that were seen at different times while she was growing up over there right. that they saw in this mountainous region. And, and they would, it was like they would come back every year at this certain time. And so she, she was really into it when she got older, you know, where she was able to she was living in the United States and was a citizen and working and saving her money. She got into, you know, reading about them. So how long was it before you actually started thinking about what actually happened to you after the incident? When my grand, when I finally wasn't in that trancy, you know, almost like when you're really... Well, back in the 70s, I smoked, so, you know, I smoked some weed, and so when you got really stoned, you know, and you'd come out of it, it was about that long. It was like that kind of experience. You know, that's how I was feeling. You know, I was like really high or something. Right. And so I don't really know. I can just really only guesstimate, you know. Maybe 15, 20 minutes. Wow. Well, what do you think about it now? Oh, you mean the when you asked me, when you asked me when I remembered it? Right. Or when I thought about it the first time? Right. In other words, after the incident, when did you actually start really thinking about what had happened to you? When I came out of this stone-like feeling, which took about 15 minutes or so once we got from the time she grabbed me till the time she got me in the house, 15, 20 minutes had gone by. Right. Okay? And she said, I asked her, what what, what was happening out there? What was going on? What did you see? You know? And we compared notes. And then, you know, she said that what she saw was a light. All she saw, something woke her up, made her get up. She comes straight out the door. She knew I was out there. And she could see these lights lighting up the whole yard, front yard, or backyard. And she saw me just staring like this. And she knew, she thought she knew what it was because she had been reading about it. So when she grabbed me and pulled me inside and got me in, she said, they were, were going to take you. And I'm like, who's they? And then that's when we actually started talking about what had happened to me. Right. And she says, I really believe that an angel, you know, woke me up just to save you because I think they were going to take you. Why else would they have this light shining on you and have you in this out of mind feeling that you were feeling? Right. And why was it that you, uh, why'd you keep it quiet until like now? I mean, you said you haven't spoke to many people about this. What he and I never reason? spoke after that night. About the incident at all? No, no. And you were afraid to talk about the incident to other people? Yeah. Why was that? That they wouldn't believe me, that they think I was crazy, or that it might find me if I was talking about it. Right. You know, maybe it would, you know, I don't know. When I was younger, I always was afraid that they would get find me again. Right. Wow. What was the most memorable thing about that event that you remember? The today. most memorable thing the that I remember. Thing, the thing that stands out above everything. My grandmother saying they were going to take me. Wow. How often do you think about what happened to you? Well, I really never thought about it much until you and I had that conversation, you know. And um, uh, because I just, it was something I blocked out. Right. I didn't want to think about it, 
Now, after the incident, did you have dreams of it? After talking to you the first time, I didn't really dream about it, but I started thinking about it more. When you were younger? When you no, no, no. Oh. When when you and I were t sitting here talking that day. Right. Um, that was really the first time I had thought about it in a long time. So it, it stirred up a little bit of memory. So now you dream about it a little bit more? You think about it a lot more? Just recently, after you called me and asked me or emailed, and then I talked to you on the phone right. about doing this, I really... It, it started, you know, like I told Linda, I said, it's really been a little bit creepy because I've been thinking about it more. Right. You know? Well, what I do you think they wanted? Any idea what they wanted? What could they have wanted from you? Information. But Implant you, something in me. Right. But you couldn't pinpoint that. You were no. really not sure what their intentions were. No. I don't. I don't think they were hostile intentions because they could have killed me if they wanted to. Right. So let me ask you this here. If it happened to you again now, what would you do? How would you react now? Oh, I would find, I would get pictures. I would, I would not be in that state of mind like I was in my youth because I do believe. So I would, you know, have my camera phone. Take, trying to take pictures, right. trying to get evidence, trying to prove that they're out there. Well, is there anything uh, you want to add that we didn't copy? The only thing that I would like to say is that people that know the Bible, the very first part of Genesis, it says God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was at, without form. He didn't say the heavens were, with, were not without form. And the heavens is where that area is, that sky, that area way, 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 way up there, where the planets are, you know, above that. And I believe that that was created. I believe that, you know, when the angels fell, I believe that there was a race created of these super smart, beings. intelligent beings, and um, and they're here, maybe they're here to, to tell us that we better straighten up, you know, we're, we're, we're trashing our, our universe, or, our, you know, our earth, our mother earth, or maybe they're here to get information about how long we have been able to survive with all the mass uh, of pollutions and pesticides and all the crap that, you so know. They could be researching us or studying yeah, us. Yeah. Um, I don't believe they had, you know, like you see in the movies, that they had hostile intentions. I don't believe that you don't at all. Because you never got that feeling from them. No. There was never, like I said, there wasn't really a fear because she had to drag me. Right. I didn't, you know, I, it was like almost like I was trying to keep her from dragging me. You know, I wanted to go see the lights. Right. You know, I didn't feel fear at that moment, you know. But I can't tell you what happened during that time because I just remember looking at this thing and it just, everything that was in my mind or my thoughts stopped. And it was like all I could see, think, or anything was that object, you know, totally out of, like, an out-of-body experience, almost, right. you know, and, uh, but that was, that was the, the most impressionable thing upon me was when she said that, when I asked her, you know, what, what just happened, what did you see, you know, and she told me they were going to take me, I think they were going to take you, that's what she said, they were going to take you. And it was, that just blew my mind. Right. And I think that's why I blocked it out. All right. Well, that's good. That's good. I thank you for your interview. You're welcome.